Have you ever dreamt of having your own space? A space where you could run away and hide to never be found again. A space where you could do just about anything you ever wanted. Now, we're not talking anything like a secret hideout or a secret underground tunnel. Over the past three years, I've been digging a secret underground tunnel. Oh no, my friends. Something much, much simpler than that. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the new workshop. And to say that I'm excited about this would be a complete understatement. It's an old abandoned farm barn that's been completely neglected and left to rot. And in today's video, I'm gonna try and convert into a bit of a garage, a place to come and do some van projects and a place to really call my own. I think I've just reduced my life by about 10 years. There's no doubt that in here is pretty basic and pretty empty, but it's a space that I can use. So who cares? This is hopefully gonna be the home and the hub for many more van projects because I really want to get my hands dirty again. Hands covered in it. Okay, now get back to using a few tools. Ow, that's flipping hot. Learning some skills. Whoa! And just to hopefully renovate and convert a really old school van into something beautiful and give it a new life. How am I going to do another van build if I can't even put an IKEA shelf up? Honestly, <laughs> my excitement levels are so high right now. I know there's gonna be a lot of questions which I'll try to answer in this video, but first things first, I've now got myself my own unit, which I can pretty much call my own, apart from the fact that I'm renting this. There's no doubt that in here is pretty basic and pretty empty. It's absolutely massive. It's eight meters long, six meters wide, about five meters tall, so there's plenty of space in here. Have a look at my front door. It's absolutely bloody brilliant. Look at this. <laughs> I think they literally must have just found that door in a skip and then attached it on. But you know what? I couldn't give a monkeys. The only downside to this place is that it's not insulated. This is just an old barn at the back and uh, there's cracks in the wood. The breeze block is all void and empty. It's not going to be retaining too much heat particularly well. Hopefully with a couple of diesel heaters, that should do the job. This is going to be the first day where I clean it out a little bit to actually make this place feel a little bit like home. And what I'm going to try and convert into a bit of a garage, a place to come and do some van projects and a place to really call my own. Step one to getting this old farm barn transformed into my very own van building paradise, well, it was to do my favorite thing. Those of you that know my cleanliness levels and my OCD, I don't want to put anything in here until I've given it as much of a good clean out as I possibly can. Annoyingly, I haven't got a brush, so uh, just gonna have to blow it all out with this. genuinely that much dust in here that I think it's dangerous. I'm gonna try and cover my mouth if I can bloody do this. Oh, right, that at least stops me inhaling half of it. I cannot express enough how dirty this unit really was. As you can see, I was finding things left, right and center. I found a can of Fosters and I just found a can of Monster. Nevertheless, I plowed on to get this place as dust free as I possibly could. <laughs> I think I've just reduced my life by about 10 years. Oh, sorry, I got spit all over me. This is absolutely horrible. This unit has literally just been made from whatever they could find on the farm. And I'm not even bothered because I like cleaning anyway. Oh, stuff in that. Tell you what, if they up the rent of this place and I have to move out in the next month, I'm gonna be pissed off. Finally, it feels like I'm making some progress. Look at the difference, that, <laughs> compared to all of that. So, just this last little section to just shove on out of here and you can actually see the floor. With light at the end of the tunnel, I continued on, but little did I know that I would be doing so much more to this floor than I initially planned. I'd like to say, that's a job well done. There's only one more thing left to do. Oh my God, what's happened to my barnet? You can see I need to go off to Turkey. Christ almighty. Let's just uh, put that down. 
don't lick your hands after you've just cleaned something like this. With step one complete, it was time for step two to commence. So the van is absolutely chock-a-block full of the most random stuff which I need to transfer all into there. I got a chair. my granddad's workbench. Rest in peace, Grandpa. Unloading all of this stuff from my van into the new workshop made me realize two things. One, how much crap have I actually got? And two, I'm so unfit. <sighs> oh God, I forgot I've got more in the back of the van, but we'll save that for later. Now is the fun part to actually start building some basic IKEA storage units and shelves. This is gonna be the shelving unit, which I'm gonna set up next, and I think actually put on the back wall. I'm just trying to visualize roughly where to place everything, and actually, once I start putting the shelves up, that means I can get stuff off the floor and get it a little bit organized. So how putting this together works is very simple. In this box, I've got these pins, and you literally just pop it in, and then you just pop the shelf on. And uh, Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt. Job done. Just need to make sure that I put them all in the same height. Oh dear. Well, the first shelf is done, but I wouldn't say it's very stable. I was putting these shelves up quicker than Usain Bolt could do the 100 meters, but just when I thought I could take a step back and appreciate my work, there was still one major problem. And stand by yourself. Oh no. The IKEA shelves are up, and uh, I'm now gonna go and try and find a piece of wood somewhere, which I can drill into the side, just to stop the bloody thing from moving. Stay there. Oh, that's flipping hot. At least I've marked where it needs to be. Who knew breeze block would be so hard to drill into? Okay, so we're kind of getting somewhere. I've just screwed this onto the wall to then attach this to that, which will stop all of this falling over. Brilliant. I finally managed to keep the screw on the drill and thought that all of the mishaps were now finished. However, there was just one more problem. Hey! Oh, bollocks. Done it! I've done it! I've had to countersink the hell out of the wood just so I can have enough length on the screw for it to actually bite into the wood. Perseverance and persistence and patience, that's the key. If I now move my supporting piece, everything should hold. Wow, that took far too long. With the shelves finally up, but the job taking me more than two hours to install, my morale was at a low, as to be honest, I was feeling pretty useless. I'm just having a moment to myself right now, and I'm feeling overwhelmed and daunted are the words that I would describe how I'm feeling right now. I've got this massive, unit and it's a pretty scary thought that I've got to make this work. If I don't, it's a waste of money, it's a waste of time and effort. And then I'm fearful of buying a van again and not knowing what the hell I'm doing. The fact that it's taken me two or three hours just to drill six screws into the wall. I'm just starting to question if I've bitten off more than I can chew. Where I am right now is literally in the middle of nowhere. Listen, you can't hear anything. It's just me on my Todd here. <laughs> but as I keep saying, and the one thing that I always love to do is to get out of my comfort zone, to learn new skills, to try something new. And I really do think that renovating an old battered motorhome will be a lot of fun. And as I did with the first van build, I'm gonna get some help with it because it's so much more enjoyable and fun to be doing things with other people so that I can learn skills from them. You guys can obviously learn those skills from the videos or watch the cock-ups and the mishaps as they usually happen quite a lot. Should be good fun. With my heart to heart over, I decided to crack on and start organizing all of this stuff. Whoa, 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 whoa. Everybody stop what you're doing 
because I've got a slight change of plan and I'm gonna show you why right now. So this workshop floor, it doesn't look the most eye-catching and it certainly isn't the most pleasant. There's a bunch of dried up concrete on the floor, which I absolutely hate. And there's something that I hate even more. Dust, dust everywhere. My plan is to now remove everything that I've already installed and put inside the unit. And I'm actually gonna seal and dust proof the entire floor. If there's ever a bloke that did a job more than once, it's me. Oh! I told you, this was gonna be a long process. That was a close one. Okay, well we really are back at square one now. The unit is completely empty. First step of getting this workshop to a place where I actually want to come to is to do something about this back wall. So because this back wall is actually the original barn shed when the building was originally made, so much stuff is just being blown through the actual gaps and just creating a load of dust and grub and just dirt. So I've also got a plan to cover that up. I got myself a new toy which is gonna make cleaning this place a hundred times easier. Oh my God, this is good. Hasta luego! That's obviously gonna dry over the next few days, the next week, but that doesn't stop me from covering up this back wall. I went to Wix this morning and picked up some black floor protective sheets, which I thought, you know what? are gonna work perfectly. I haven't measured anything, so I'm just hoping for the best right now. I thought it was a pretty good idea. Problem is, how do I now get up from here to there? Where there's a will, there's a way. It seemed like the most cost-effective and uh, efficient way of getting this job done fairly quickly. Yeah. He says. Yeah. Hopefully that does something. Brilliant, I don't think I actually put that in the wood. I don't know if this is gonna look pretty, but it's gonna do the job. Oh God. Whoa. I'm just looking at this one piece that I've put up and thinking, am I absolutely bodging this? I do love the way that the cladding looks. What's more important, the way it looks or the practicality of what it does? <sighs> practicality, I think. And now I've got a makeshift ladder. Oh. Just gotta keep my weight forward. That's a little bit better. I'm a genius, some may say. Oh fuck, I missed it. Yeah, how are we looking? Okay. With things looking good and progress being made, it was time to get the measuring tape out and finish off the last final section. Oh, God. My ladder's not quite as stable and secure as I would like. Oh, man. There's screws that have ripped a hole in my thing. That's no good. Let's try that again. My masterpiece isn't done quite yet. Finger and your face. Lovely. With the back wall done, it was time to turn my attention to the floor. But first, a drink. This is your standard bottle of water that you can buy from any supermarket across the country. However, drinking from this every day, there's a big problem with that. One, it's not good to reuse plastic bottles like this because it's not good for your health. Two, if you lose the bottle cap, you're absolutely buggered. And three, it's just no good for the environment. This is my 10 pound go outdoors water bottle. Unfortunately, I've also got a problem with this. Although it's great to take on a hike, it's too small and too little. And this is my gym and Huel water bottle. There's one major problem with it, it leaks. But this, this is the Hydro X water bottle. And this is the absolute Mac Daddy of water bottles. It is a really decent size that can hold up to almost a liter of liquids. It's nice, sturdy, and durable. It's also really well insulated, so on a hot summer's day, your drink will actually stay cold. And it's got some really quirky features that I love about it. It's actually got two different ways of drinking from the bottle. You lift this clip up, you now have access to the mouthpiece, so you can drink it like a normal bottle. And the second one is here, through a straw, Lovely. And last but not least, if you just unscrew this little cap at the bottom, 
you've got a nice bit of storage super handy because you can put some tablets in there you could put some chocolates some snacks whatever it is pop that in there and then you just screw it back on and no one would ever know if you guys want to check out this hydro x water bottle then i will leave a link down in the description where you can check it out you can pick one up they do a range of different colors and from now on this is going to be the new workshop water bottle for the foreseeable future let me crack on with getting this flooring done to give the paint the best possible chance to actually stick to this concrete i need to clear as much loose particles and materials from the bloody floor as i possibly can i'm sure if i had the right tools this job would be a hundred times quicker but I don't. There's gonna be a lot of people in the comments saying, Will, you are going far too overboard. And believe me, I know it. I just can't help myself. And with a helping hand from the hilly billy, aimlessly wandering around the farm, we got to it. By chipping, scraping, and doing whatever the hell we could to remove as much of the dried up concrete as possible. I'm hoping that we can all agree, the floor is looking a hundred times better than what it did when I first started. However, there's just one slash two jobs left to do. Actually, no, there's three or four. So the next step to get this floor ready for paint is gonna to be to apply this. This is a product called Etch and Clean. It's from Watco. It should basically clean the surface and give it a nice key so that when I put primer, when I put paint on top, the paint actually sticks and stays there. Okay, here goes nothing. It's gonna come out pink and then when it's done its job, it should go clear. I swear to God, this has to be the last time I brush this unit out. Ooh. 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 My God, it's hard work. It's now time for my favorite tool of all. How I have gone 29 years on this planet without one of these is beyond me because this thing is an absolute game changer. <laughs> Wow, I tell you what, you can really see the difference that that's actually made. Ah, oh, it's pissing water everywhere. So there was a reason that I didn't actually deep clean this back section of the workshop. And the reason for that is because of this. This is from a company called Duramat. It's actually some rubber matting, which I'm gonna lay down at the back of the workshop. I found it online. It's what you find in most kind of workshops and garages. And I thought, you know what? It's gonna make a nice difference just being able to differentiate different parts of the actual unit. There is one problem, which uh, I've already found a solution to. These square mats actually come 50 by 50 with these little lugs on the end however i obviously don't want to put the lugs at the back of the wall because that just looks crap so i've just gone to screw fix to pick myself up a dewalt circular saw and i actually just cut off the lugs on the first mat to do a little test piece if i now put it against the wall it now gives us a nice straight flush finish towards the back of the wall i need to do that basically all the way long and then i can start piecing this thing together Straight as a whistle. Straight as a whistle, is that even a thing? Mm. Oh, my back. Couple more pieces. So, all 11 back wall pieces are now cut. So the plan now is to actually start connecting all of these up by these little lugs that just connect them together. You get a hammer, you tap it all in, and it makes one uniform piece. I can then work out how much I need to cut off both sides. Oh, yes! We're getting somewhere. In fact, all I'm gonna do is just cut the edge off that one, and then that side can be pushed up against the wall. Oh, yes, baby. Yes, I think it's gonna work. I'm a wizard, Harry. I am a wizard. That'll do, donkey. That'll do. It finally feels like some progress is being made and I'm pretty much done for today because I've got a hell of a lot of stuff to bring back in here. And I will see you on Monday where the fun can begin and I can actually start painting the floor. Well, as with everything that I have done so far on this workshop and on this channel, to be honest with you, plans have changed yet again. I had no plan or intention to paint the walls 
I now do. I had no plan or intention to paint the floor when I first got the unit. I now do. A lot of people are probably going to be thinking, Will, you're going far too OTT and far too mad with this. And to be honest with you, you're probably right. But the reason I'm putting so much time and effort into it and changing the plans constantly is because I want to make it somewhere where I actually want to come and work. Somewhere that's clean, tidy, organized. Somewhere which I can have as my own little man cave, my own little workshop. So a space that I can really call my own. And with all of that comes preparation because I need to prepare the walls and the floor so that the paint will actually stick to it. And what I've quickly just done is removed all of the screws holding up the cables and I've bought some paint, I've bought some brushes. After I've painted the walls, I will get the floor finished, but it doesn't make sense painting the floor first and then the walls. <sighs> It's going to be a bit of a process. I'm super overwhelming myself out because I'm like, am I just wasting all this time and effort? But hopefully, fingers crossed, touch some wood somewhere that it's all going to be worth it. This is what I needed right from the beginning. It really would have made preparing the floor and the walls now a hundred times easier because I've just put a little sanding disc on the end of it. This is going to get rid of any of that dried up cement stuck on the floor or the walls in about 0.2 seconds. <laughs> Only annoying thing is I've only got bloody one DeWalt battery. So hopefully the battery doesn't go. Brilliant, I'm running out of battery. Battery is dead. Oh, having the right tools, it makes such a difference. A few moments later. So the grinder and sanding disc really did make my life 100 times easier, but also 100 times dustier. But it was well worth it because it made prepping the wool so much faster and easier. Once everything had been tidied up from the wool, me and my hilly billy friend applied some breeze block paint primer. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> which helps the brick soak up as much moisture as possible before painting. You can see the difference, but the breeze block just soaks it in straight away. That's why they tell you to prime a breeze block because if you just painted straight on top of this, the first coat pretty much does nothing. You can see here, it looks a little bit wet and damp, but hopefully once that dries, you can just paint straight on top of this. With the first wool prepped, primed, and now drying, it was time to repeat the entire process on the back wall and the side wall before we could actually apply the first lick of paint. Now, as you've seen already in this video, if I was going to do a job, I wanted to make sure I was doing it my way or the highway. So stupidly, I decided to paint this entire workshop brick by brick by brick with a two-tone color scheme of a gray kind of brickwork effect on the top and just for ease because I was totally exhausted from painting black on the bottom to finish it all off. Oh my God, we're on day three of painting the unit. Just got to get this side wall done. But it sounds like a hurricane is going on outside. This is going to be a really good place to film YouTube videos, isn't it? Ah! My God! With a storm going on outside and hitting the unit from every angle, nothing was stopping me as I had bricks to be painted and a workshop to finish. This wall is done. Only one more to go. Finally, today, I feel like some progress is actually gonna be done. Two reasons, one, the sun is out. The second reason is I've got Evie here. <laughs> With your glasses. You do. Do I? No, no cereal. I've dragged her here to come and help me because the walls are almost done. There is one wall left of paint, which I've left just for you. And there's a couple of other things that I want to touch up before we crack on with the floor. We may have realized something the other day, by the way. Well, I say we. What? You think I've got ADHD. We, we know that. Because I keep constantly changing my mind. I can't concentrate on one task at a time. I start doing one thing, then I realize, oh, there's another five things I'd like to do because there's also another job I want to do to the workshop. Follow me. <laughs> I have bought some black cans of spray. I just want to touch up and actually get in the nooks and crannies here. You guys probably can't see too well on camera. You can when I get lower here. It looks all right front on, but when you look at it from different angles, that's when you can see kind of the imperfections. This was like a cheap way to hopefully fill in the cracks, get the black all done, and then we're going to take everything out of here and hopefully, fingers crossed, potentially get the first set of paint or primer on the floor today. I'm also thinking I need to change the color of this back wall. Huh? Why? Everything's got to match. It is probably a waste of time, but... Put your bench there, your shelving unit, everything's going to be covered anyway. Just get on with it and start 
Building a van. Yeah, I've been in a lot of trouble since I've got this workshop because I'm just faffing about. This might be a complete waste of time, but why not? Whoa. Whoa. I need to put a mask on. <coughs> That's really good straight to my lungs. Can you put this mask on? Oh, sugar tips. I should put some frog tape there. This was a much cheaper way than buying a 150 pound paint sprayer, which I did contemplate doing. And it's working well. <coughs> All the effort, time and hard work was slowly starting to pay off as the workshop was finally starting to come to life. Does it look better? Is it worth it? Sure. Evie, are you joking me? What? Flipping Nora! What? What do you mean? Look at her! Look, it's so patchy at the bottom there. Look, 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 I know, no. Babe, you can get much I'll go back over it after. Just be a little bit careful, yeah? I am being careful. Slight bit of a control freak, just a little bit. So while Evie was cracking on with her side of the workshop and continuing the theme of painting brick by brick, I was making some real progress on my side. So hopefully you guys can actually see a clear difference. This is all of the stuff that I'm filling in with the spray paint compared to that where you literally can't see too many gaps, maybe a few which I'll need to touch up, but it's really good because this paint is drying exactly the same as the paint that I put on. A Little bit more to go. I feel like it's gonna be three cans per wall. Evie's doing a lovely job over there. I don't know if I've really addressed this because I know there's a few people that are probably gonna think, Will, you're a bit mad to go through all of this this effort, time and money just to paint the workshop. And the reason is, to me, this isn't just a workshop. I want this to be a bit of a creative space, a space for people to come and hang out. Yes, I wanna do van projects in here. I wanna do some DIY projects, but that's the reason I wanna make it nice and put the time into it so that it's a space that I actually wanna come and use. The last job, I promise to get this floor prepped. I went and bought some instant cement, which you just have to mix some water in with it. Give it a good old mix up. How fun is this? So I've never, ever done this before. Right now it looks like lumpy diarrhea. I think I've got 10 minutes to play with it until it goes rock solid. If I look like I know what I'm doing, I don't. But that's half the fun of it. Oh, my God. Probably should have loosened it up on the bottom before we put the water in. My hand's covered in it. <laughs> I'll be totally honest with you, I don't know if I'm actually just making the floor worse, but we'll see. Looks better. I've filled in a lot of holes, but if I'm being totally honest, I've made myself more work because when I now put the paint on, it's going to be lumpy. So I'm going to have to get the grinder out and just smooth all of this out. And then uh, that's it. No more floor prep to be done. Have a look at this. The workshop, the walls, everything. Well, not everything, but the walls are painted. The side walls, the back wall. I've even got my little flooring protection on the back unit. The cables are back on the screw. Look at this space, it's so lovely and clean, no dust. Oh, it has probably taken me about five or six days to get to this position. But now the unit is back pretty much where it started from. However, the walls have obviously changed color and I know for a fact when I put this flooring on, it's gonna look so bloody good in here. The only thing left to do now is to put all of this stuff at the back of the unit. We can then put the primer on and then the first lick of floor paint, probably tomorrow. It's been a nightmare, it's been a ball lake, but my point is I'm glad I took the time to get this kind of how I wanted it to look. And uh, I think once everything's in place, it's gonna look quality. <laughs> <laughs> We're almost done. Hey, voila. Everything can go back. Why are you going to cry? You actually look like you're going to cry. I'm going to. Why are you going to cry? Why are you crying? <laughs> We're almost done. We're going home. <laughs> Fucking hell. Oh, my One more. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. 
shelf is back on. Beautiful. Progress. Progress. Now it was really time for the fun and the heavy lifting to begin. To bring everything I own that had been moved already 100 times during this workshop renovation back inside the unit for the final time. So much crap. Holy moly. We're almost done. Finally, the moment has come to prime the floor. We've got to put some four hour epoxy primer. It's from a company called Watco. We've got the, what do you call that? Roller, it's been a bloody long day. It's been about, what, how long? We've been here for, been since 8 a.m. It's now 20 to seven, so almost a 12 hour day. Pour the liquid contents of the two small tins, resin and hardener into the larger outer tin and mix thoroughly until uniform in color. This might be completely unnecessary, but. Wow, have a look at this. If there's one thing that's gonna stop this floor from being so dusty, it's gotta be this. Apparently we gotta act quick, so chuck this in. Do you wanna roll or do you wanna paint? This stuff feels bloody brilliant. It's gonna literally seal this entire floor. The priming of the floor is done. That stuff honestly felt like just putting honey on the concrete floor, but uh, super sticky. Wait for that to dry and uh, we'll catch you tomorrow morning to get this bloody thing finished and painted. 12 hours later, the primer has all set, all hardened up, and hopefully you can hear that. It is so sticky, which is great because that means the paint is 100% gonna actually stick to the floor. Super bloody impressed with this Watco primer. So you can see here how shiny the floor actually is and it's completely sealed in all of the actual dust and everything that there's literally no dust in here now which is exactly what i wanted the nice thing as well is that i tried to fill as many divots and little cracks in the actual concrete and it's actually completely hardened up you can see here how the epoxy has literally just kind of flattened out it's very very good stuff isn't it you can obviously really see the difference here because this is just a bare concrete and then this is where we put the primer on. It's looking good, it's looking 100 times better. You can already see the difference that the primer has actually made. There is one silly thing that we did last night. Did I mention that this stuff is sticky? Oh, look at that. That is rock solid, this piece of paper. The pin to get the roller out of the frame of the roller is stuck in there. Fucking hell. Nope. Oh. oh man. Nope. Might have to try and hammer it out. It's so close. This is it. This is it. Now it should enable me to take the roller off. If you want this. I'll sign it and send it to someone. Just let me know in the comments. The process of putting the paint on is exactly the same. So inside here, there is uh, the paint itself, which is an epoxy gloss coat. I've gone for a light gray color. When you put this on, it all hardens up. It's nice and durable. It's for heavy vehicles to come in and out. What color is this? <laughs> it's white. We'll get this all taped up, actually put the paint on, and everything should look a lot nicer. Here goes nothing. That'll do for the moment. Right, time to roll this bad boy on. I think it looks pretty good. You're gonna need some sunglasses in here. The first coat is on, but there's one problem. I can't reach the light switch. Are you sure you got me? Are you sure? Trust me. Like, <laughs> I don't think I I think I can get it. Oh. <laughs> Take my hand, I'm gonna. No, because you're gonna fall. I've got an idea. Put that down, stand up. Really? Yeah, please. 
then it won't do a footprint. That was easier. <laughs> Oh, no. Right, I'll see you in 48 hours when we've put another coat of paint on and the job is done. Are you ready to check this out? <laughs> 11 days later, and we are in, in what I would like to call a 99.9% .9 finished workshop. All of the time and effort that it took to actually prepare the floor about 500 times to prepare the walls and basically prepare everything that I had to do before I could start putting paint on, primer. I think it's been completely worth it because I absolutely love the way it looks in here. The floor, I love it. It looks absolutely amazing. The great thing is, because it's actually a light gray color, it reflects and bounces up a bunch of the natural light coming in the workshop behind you. It works so well with kind of the black lower part of the walls and then the gray kind of textured brickwork that I was going on the top half. I'll give you a little tour because why not? Now that I've kind of put everything in place and in the positions that for the moment I think they're gonna need to be in, obviously when I start to actually use this space, I'll move things around, I'll start to add different tools. I may even actually add some lights on the walls, put some shelves and things just to get stuff away from the walls and up high. But uh, for the moment, I think it looks absolutely brilliant and it's a space that I can use, which is what I said in the beginning. I absolutely love this Duramat black matte with the yellow edge because it just adds a nice bit of distinction from the back kind of area of the workshop to the rest of the workshop which is exactly what I wanted to do right so at the back of the workshop we have got this bench here fun fact for you this bench was actually my dad's my mum bought it for him when they were married they then divorced I know I come from a broken home like most people, but my dad actually kept the bench and then he doesn't use it anymore. So I said, can I have that bench? It's beautifully made. It's nice and rustic and uh, very sturdy. So I sanded it down, made it look a little bit nicer and prettier because it had been in storage for years. We've got a nice little old classic toolbox here, which to be honest with you, I have no idea what I'm currently gonna put in there. One little feature I did do the other day was put up a batten, screw it onto the breeze block wall, and then I've got things like clamps and stuff hanging from that. The next thing at the back of the workshop is of course the bloody IKEA storage shelves, which I must have put up and taken down about two or three different times. For the moment, again, I've just kind of organized things as best I possibly could. Paints down there, there's some screws, bolts, all in those boxes. That's kind of electrical equipment. We've got these, I can't remember what you call these. These are completely forgot what they're called but some little storage units my old kind of camping box which i had when i had the ford galaxy painting stuff all of this i'm sure will become even more filled as time goes on i've not actually shown you the best thing about the workshop which is the entire reason why i needed to get a space like this is in the building. Now obviously I'm not renting this unit purely to put my van in here because that would be the most expensive car parking space in the entire world. No, the reason I got the workshop and a space like this is one, because I do want to upgrade the inside and the outside of my van, but also I want to get back to doing some more DIY, getting back to learning some more skills and also buying a motorhome, another camper van, something to renovate and just do some projects with. So a space like this is really, hopefully, fingers crossed, gonna be great for me, great for you guys, because it means hopefully I can get back to some weekly uploads and get back to some more content. And to be honest with you, I'm very excited and a little bit nervous of what's to come. As always guys, if you have enjoyed today's video, if you're excited for the future plans, please make sure to give the video a like. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks so much for watching and I will catch you in the next video where I'm actually gonna be using this space for the first time.